The Clipper Chip, A Bad Idea Poorly Executed by Patrick Medina, BIS 6113, Security Management. The power of most governments is not necessarily the power found in military arms or the sophistication of weapons. But in the power to keep secrets. The concept of aggressors hacking communications was commonplace even during the Civil War. Captain, message coming through. Train is on its way. Better get ready. A good example of compromised communications is the Zimmerman note that contributed to the Americans fighting against the Germans during World War I. Named after the German Foreign Office Secretary, Arthur Zimmerman, who confirmed its authenticity, the Zimmerman telegram detailed how Germany would give Mexico, Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico in exchange for being Germany's ally during the war. Unfortunately for World War I-era Germany, the note, which was meant to be kept secret, was intercepted by British intelligence and is an example of the CIA triad's value in government communications. In 1977, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST for short, adopted the Data Encryption Standard, DES, that was to be used as a standardized encryption for the U.S. government. While the DES certainly fulfilled a need in its time, technology was already pressing ahead with more advancements. By the 1990s, this encryption was becoming outdated if it was not outdated already. As further evidence that DES was outdated, a group of mathematicians and computer scientists networked about 600 computers from volunteers and using their computer time were able to solve a problem equal in complexity to breaking a 129 digit RSA key. While the RSA key was not a precise comparison to the DES key, the 129 digit RSA key was significantly more difficult to break as compared to the DES's 56 bit key. It was quite clear that a new encryption system was needed. To solve this issue, a new technology was adopted by the government. But while it did help with encryption, its primary purpose was controversial. In 1993, the National Security Agency developed the Escrow Encryption System, or EES, which also included the Clipper Chip System. While this encryption system did provide a slightly better encryption than the DES, it came with another feature. There are three keys used by the EES system, the session key, the chip key, and the family key, and the session key was split in half. The NIST would be responsible for one half of the key, and the Treasury Department's Automated Systems Division would be responsible for the other half. This leads to the controversial feature that doomed this encryption. If a government agency presented the appropriate authorization, that agency would be provided both halves of the session key and be able to access a backdoor to the EES system. The backdoor would allow that agency to intercept voice and data communications. It was the government's hope that the Clipper chip system would be widely accepted on a similar scale to modern day smartphones and thereby be able to intercept a wide range of communications. But by 1994, there was already a problem with the ch clipper chip. Matt Blaze of at and Bell Laboratories was able to form a DOS attack that compromised the session key. The clipper chip's backdoor access was granted by the Law Enforcement Access Field, or LEAF. Within about 42 minutes, Blaze was able to replicate the LEAF, and while he could not eavesdrop along with the government, he could compromise the integrity of the session key via the invalid LEAF. Thereby, the agency listening in to the communications would get nothing. One would think that such technology as the clipper chip system would be highly controversial, and indeed it was the target of a subculture of computer programmers who call themselves cyberpunks. These cyberpunks believe that cryptography is a liberating tool and one of its most important uses is to protect communications from the government. Adhering to the subculture's values, Philip R. Zimmerman created a cryptography program that would be able to protect computer data and electronic mail. This program, called PGP, or Pretty Good Privacy, was given away freely by Zimmerman and is the same email security tool as found in the textbook on page 533. With the release of very strong and most importantly public encryption packages to include PGP, PGP Phone, and Nautilus, the government was unable to stop the use of public encryption. With the advent of encryption systems that surpassed level encryption found in the clipper chip, 
It would be unnecessary for a private company to adopt a clipper chip while another encryption program was readily available, did not have to be paired with a similar device, and most importantly, free. The clipper chip system was an attempt to increase encryption for the government, but its end result was being deployed as a means for the government to have the resources in place to intercept voice and data communications. While the clipper chip was not intended to be employed in all telecommunications, the uproar over its introduction caused the development of rival encryption software that surpassed the clipper chip's encryption and integrity. Consequently, within a few short years of its introduction, it became outdated. This particular attempt by the government to monitor communications via the clipper chip commercially failed by 1996 when it was declared that the clipper chip system would only be used for internal voice communications for the government.